Problem 7. Buchenwald was documented by psych warfare. There are various intelligence departments that follow the troops into a defeated country and document what they find for future generations. The psych warfare department is not one of them. Psych warfare is more about lying to the enemy in order to manipulate them. To pick from the many examples, we go to the book Psych War, written by a Psych War Department captain shortly after World War II. For a minute and a half, we're going to be reading about a guy named Tom. He has nothing to do with Buchenwald, but it's necessary that we have an example of the type of thing Psych Warfare does to help us understand what Psych Warfare is. Two types of humor used by Psych War may be mentioned to illustrate the range of its efforts. One was a regular feature of Radio Luxembourg, broadcast as Corporal Tom Jones. Tom was represented as a typical American GI, friendly and easygoing by nature, with a keen sense of fair play and a deep-rooted love of justice. Because he grew up in the Green Bay area of Wisconsin among a large German population, it was explained, Tom had learned to speak German in his youth. He spoke in the open and candid manner which many Europeans used to associate with Americans before their liberation or occupation. His broadcasts ended with a joke, usually a gemutlich little story with a comical aspect, but invariably with a moral lesson. Richard F. Hanser, the psych war broadcaster who played the role of Tom Jones, has responded to this writer's questionnaire with the following description. The originality lay in creating a simple homey character talking to the enemy as man to man, not as merely a disembodied voice representing the U.S. Army or the U.S. government. Tom was designed to create a recognizable personality to which listeners could respond with some warmth and interest, and in this we evidently succeeded. Tom spoke with an atrocious American accent, which was all to the good. There was no suspicion that he was a German-born turncoat. He told human interest anecdotes in a simple and even naive way, which left him free of the taint of cleverness, sharp dealing, or underhanded needling. Tom Jones is real sincere, except that he's not even real. This book is full of examples of psych war telling lies and starting rumors, because that's what psych warfare does. Now let's read where Professor David Hackett tells us that the first two Americans to enter Buchenwald on April 11th were probably Egon W. Fleck, a civilian, and First Lieutenant Edward A. Tenenbaum, intelligence officers assigned to the Publicity and Psychological Warfare Unit of the 12th Army Group Headquarters. The first two Americans to enter Buchenwald worked for Psych Warfare? If you had this book, Psych War, after reading about that sincere guy, Corporal Tom Jones, you could go to the back to the list of psych warfare personnel and read Egon Fleck, first American to enter Buchenwald. Why in the world would psych warfare be the first to enter Buchenwald? I'll tell you why. So they could plant objects like two shrunken heads and tattooed skin as part of a plan which involved making a short film directed by Billy Wilder. But there was another totally separate component of the psych warfare operation, a lengthy written documentation of the camp. David Hackett's introduction to this documentation tells us that the person in charge of documenting Buchenwald wasn't just a member of psych warfare, but was a German-Jewish member of psych warfare, which might create some conflict of interest objectivity issues. Hackett writes that Albert G. Rosenberg was born into a well-to-do German-Jewish family in Göttingen and had attended the University of Göttingen before emigrating to the United States in 1938. He enlisted in the army and was lucky to get into psych warfare where there is no chance of getting killed in battle. Near the end of the war, he and his psych warfare team were in charge of managing a project that involved choosing a dozen inmates to write a 400-page documentation of Buchenwald. There's a picture of Rosenberg's team in the book Psych War under the cheeky title Kampfgruppe Group Rosenberg, which means Battle Group Rosenberg. Rosenberg isn't in the picture, though. In Psych War, we read, 
Every member of the team either was born in the German-speaking area of Europe or was brought there at a comparatively early age. The report which they had the inmates create was written in German but never published. Fifty years later, Professor David Hackett translated this documentation into English and added an introduction and footnotes, which is this book, The Buchenwald Report. Although it was never published back then, the top Buchenwald inmate who worked under Albert G. Rosenberg to create it, Eugen Kagen, was commissioned to rework it into a readable paperback book for the German population. Rosenberg confiscated a German house which he then gave to Kagen so he could live there and write the new manuscript. The house was conveniently located just two miles from the new Psych Warfare Department headquarters which had now changed its name to Information Control. Here's what Professor David Hackett says about Coggins' book called Der SS Staat. His book will no doubt be a lasting legacy. As the first major study, it directly and indirectly influenced all later literature on Nazism, the SS, concentration camps, and the Holocaust. It is still one of the most frequently cited works in the field. To summarize, the Buchenwald psych warfare operation made history, emphasis on made. Besides the significant media coverage, two pieces of media came out of it, a book written by Eugen Coggin and a short movie directed by Billy Wilder.